Hi right, guys, I'm back at it uh, on this uh, toy hauler again. I'm going to be installing some uh, solar panels. The customer provided these because, how do I put it, Amazon has destroyed the marketplace for uh, solar panels. I can't compete with uh, Amazon for the prices. So let's take a look at what uh, the customer got. So we're going with the Renogy system. They've actually been reviewed pretty well. I've installed these a number of times. These are 100 watt panels. We're putting three of them on there, so that would be a 300 watt system. Uh, it has all the connectors I, you need for it. it. Even has a Bluetooth module. I was uh, gonna make a video on this, but some of the audio got destroyed. Uh, if you'll notice in my opening, you see me screwing down one of these panels. But at any rate, <laughs> There's the wiring, the feet, the panels, the charge controller I have on the other side, and that's neither here nor there. But uh, what I can tell you, in my opinion, before we go that far, a lot of these uh, RVs, a lot of these motorhomes, a lot of these trailers come pre-installed from the factory with a solar panel hookup. And just like those satellite pre-installs pre wiring, it's all garbage. You waste more time using that system than just running your own system. And this one has one. Let's take a look at it. So we come around to the front. This is where the batteries are located. Look at this. The factory installed a solar panel charge hookup right here. It's a great place to put that. Look at that. Look how easy that, that wire was to run. From that plug to the battery. But you know what that means? You either have to run a really long cable from the roof all the way to there to plug in where you put the panels on the ground which doesn't do you any good when you're in storage because somebody's going to take your panels so that's uh, another one of those gee whiz added features that they get to charge you extra for that doesn't help you out at all really when it comes to installing these solar systems it's I'm not going to say it's plug and play but it's <clears throat> battery to the controller controller to the panels or the array it's pretty straightforward the biggest problem is just routing the wires and deciding where everything's going to go. Uh, this is a big uh, toy hauler. I have all the real estate in the world I want on the roof. I mean, that's like a football field I have up here. And of course, the batteries are up front, and that's the only place where I really can't mount them. I could maybe try to cram them right in the front right there. But either way, I'm going to try to get to that. That's the uh, the vent through the wet wall. So I'm going to be going through the roof right about there. Which means I might as well put the panels towards the back right here. I have all sorts of room back here. All right, so we know the, pad, the batteries are at the front. So if we want to get the wire out to the front as much as we can. I think I left the charge controller under there. Let me grab it. So there's the charge controller. It's a fairly basic one, but it reviews nicely. I can either put the charge controller on the wall right there. It does have a Bluetooth, so you should be able to um, look at it with your phone. Or I can put it right here, because I'm gonna be putting the wires through the wet wall. Just like the Matrix, the wet wall has a uh, a vent stack going all the way from the from the roof all the way to the basement. So it's good to always find that one, which is why I removed the uh, one, or not the 110, but the uh, electrical distribution panel right here, so I can see inside the wall here. The service access for the plumbing there on the out on the outside, you can see light coming in through there. So I have pretty good access, so I can get the wiring ran. Here's the other side of that. So I can go up through here, secure it against there, the framing there, and then come out right where they already have a wire going. Coming out through there, follow it over to there, and either go to the uh, regulator there or to the batteries. I personally think it's nice to be able to see the, uh, the display on that, uh, that panel, but I haven't decided how important it is to see it in the bathroom. 
because there's really nowhere else to put that. Give it some thought. Maybe I'll call the customer. So I just pulled the fireplace out. And now we can see a little bit better view of where we go, overview. So there's the uh, panel over, or the electrical distribution right there. And there's the water distribution right there. And right here, there's a vent stack that goes up that wall. Looks like a straight shot to me. Okay, so that's my plan. Uh, dragging stuff up and down the roof, cutting holes, that's not really that exciting. Uh, if anything exciting happens, I'll, I'll share it with you. Probably next time you'll see me, I'll be running some wires down the roof and covering them up. <laughs> so I got all the screws out of that. That came out pretty easily. I can see sunlight coming through from down below. If I reach back here, there's actually a, a support. So I don't want to drill right here. And it looks like it's offset a little bit. So I want to kind of drill a hole somewhere in this area. That's what I'm going to shoot for. Okay, so that's where I drilled the hole for the cable to go through. I'm feeding it right here because it's easier to feed it down through there. I can just loop it underneath and come out the roof there. Uh, so I have one, one wire ran down through there. I'll go to the other side and make sure I can grab it. And then I'll grab the, uh, the second wire, just tape it to this one, then I can pull them both through at the same time. All right, well, I got the other wire taped up to that wire, so now I can just feed it down, then go downstairs and pull. And uh, once I get that cable, I can stop and untape it. Set it in my wire. That's what I wanted. Cool. Now I can put the solar panels on. All right, so that's what it's basically gonna look like. I mean, Left enough space up there so you can service the AC without running into the uh, solar panels. You kind of see how I'm overlapping so I have the top or the middle one on top. Kind of like a shingle. And, and these wires generally make it to the middle. To the middle. And then at the middle, that's where I'll go to those wires. So let's get these things uh, secured. I like to secure at least uh, one end. That way they don't peep around and move on me, so I'll throw some screws in it, and then uh, wire this thing up. Now it might look kind of disgusting, but it all works out. So each end of uh, each panel has a male and a female. So as long as we use that, uh, keep the same end together. So this is, I guess we'll call it the male of that one. The male of this one's already plugged into this adapter, into this adapter. So they're all going together and it's still a, a male at the end. So we're going to do the same thing with the other side. We have uh, the female on that side. And so those are already plugged in here. I put this other adapter in. That gives me one more spot to go in. And I end up with a uh, female adapter at the end. Before we go any further, after I plug everything in, I'll check the voltage and make sure we got good voltage. Okay, so there we go. It might look disgusting, but I got the positive probe on positive, negative on the negative, and we're putting out, call it 18.3 volts DC. And it looks like my polarity is correct, so we're looking good there. So if I were to cover up one, yeah, look at that, we're going down. And going back up again. So again, this is in parallel, so the voltage doesn't change. Uh, we've tripled the amperage, basically, because it's in parallel. But that'll all be done by the uh, the charge controller. This is, that's why you need a charge controller, because 18.3 volts will destroy your batteries on a 12 volt setup. Uh, like I said, this might look disgusting. That's about as many as I would do. And then I just tuck those wires underneath and seal this thing down. I'll hook up those wires. The other end of the wires are disconnected, so they're not gonna get shorted out. Now the Renogy kit gives you a, uh, a cable deck plate to put over the roof hole. This is the uh, cable roof plate that they give you. There's no real way to secure it down other than to glue it down. A lot more work than necessary. But in my opinion that thing's garbage. I would never use it. I really like these uh, Weingard uh, deck plates or uh, cable entry plates, CE2000. Uh, I've never seen these things leak before. 
I say that, but I don't want to tempt fate. So I'll just use that instead, seal everything really well, and then get to put it back down. I just like to mark where it's going to be on the roof so I know where to put the sealant. And then when I seal it, I seal under the cables and then I seal on top of the cable so it's pretty well engulfed in sealant. And then we can just screw it down. But I decided that this is going to go next to the batteries. We have the Bluetooth module so you can see everything from the Bluetooth. And besides, the temperature sensor won't reach from the bathroom to that panel anyways. So I think that'll be the easiest route to go. Alright, so here are up front. I got the solar panel wires wired all the way up to this point right here. Okay, right, we're going to put the charge controller right there-ish. Uh, there, right? There's a screw sticking out right there. Alright. So I need to make sure I hook this up correctly. So I need to find out which one of these is positive and which one is negative. So I have to do to do that, because I'm in full sun right now, is get my meter out. So right now I have negative 18 volts. So that means my red is hooked up to negative and my black's hooked up to positive. So this one on top is positive. I just have to mark that down, then I'll know everything. Before I put this all together, it's important to point out that this is a, has a rating of 30 amps. So we need to make sure we have overcurrent protection that will go exceed 30 amps. Right here, I have a 40 amp breaker. I'm going to put it in place. And remember, this is just overcurrent protection. The only reason why you have a circuit breaker or a fuse isn't to protect the device or the components. It's to keep the wires from overheating and causing a fire. That's why we put the overcurrent protection in. So this thing could put out at least 30 amps, so we want to go above 30 amps. I'm going to go to 40 amps, that'll be safe. And uh, that wire can handle 40 amps. And it's a self-resettable circuit breaker. Okay guys, I think I got it hooked up. We'll find out here shortly. We're going on the back side of here because it was not labeled because why would it be? Positive, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, panel positive, panel negative, battery positive, battery negative. This data cable goes to the Bluetooth module. Download the app for that to work. You get the battery sense that goes down to the battery here. And you have the temperature sensor, which is right there. Look at that. Now we know what the temperature of the battery is. So I guess I just have to turn this panel around and see if we got anything going on. Oh, look at that. We're charging. It was charging at uh, 19 amps. That's pretty good. 13 volts. Battery is 43 degrees Celsius. All right, there we're back to 19 amps. Looking good. I didn't show you over here. There's my overcurrent protection. So it goes from the battery straight to here. And I guess it's all working. I just need to button this all up and this job will be done. So let's magically make it pretty. Because you got to make it look good. You can't have it look bad, right? I also have to hook these batteries up correctly. They had like 12 gauge wires connecting the two. Okay. Okay, guys, I think I'm happy with the way it turned out. Got our temperature sensor right there in the battery compartment. I got all the wires hooked up and uh, and ran. I actually did download the uh, the app. Maybe I can figure out how to show you some of the things that I recorded from it. Um, <clears throat> set it up for uh, flooded batteries, 12 volt, and I think we're gonna call this one done. Do uh, one final look on the panels and uh, had to go get some sealant and seal it off and that was done. But overall I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. Well there you have it guys. We installed a 300 watt Renogy solar array on this. Uh, it was a 2016, not 18. I don't know where I came up with 18. The sun's doing things to my brain. 
Uh, we saw it charging about 13.86 amps. So, best case scenario in a 300 watt system is 25 amps DC. Uh, probably shouldn't ever really get that. It's a little, the sun's behind a little weird misty cloud right now and it's not direct sunlight on it. So I think we're looking pretty good. 14 amps is a pretty good charge by any, by any amounts. Uh, you should be able to run every single light in here and not deplete your batteries at that point. Still charge them. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Bye. We're just going to uh, do these all parallel. That is to say... I'll have a cent uh, yeah my center one will be the the main node so all the positives will go to the the center and then the, the uh, positive wire out will come off the, the middle panel down to the roof and the other two will hook together that way all the wires will be right underneath and I won't have to put this into series or do anything crazy I mean it's kind of crazy to use plugs inside plugs but that's what they sent and that's how it works really really easily if i was going to put more than 300 watts on this then i'd probably be doing a series parallel sort of system definitely with a M mppt system instead of uh what this is pulse 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 with pulse width modulation might be getting hot up here uh but this is about the max i would do with this kind of a setup with not running any more wires